Top fertility questions I get asked every single day as a fertility doctor. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford, a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I am a fertility doctor and I spend a lot of time on the internet. I'm on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. I host the As Woman podcast. I have this YouTube. I have a new book coming out called The Fertility Formula. And I interact with real life patients in my clinic and with people online every day. And I see some of the same questions over and over. So today I'm gonna try to answer for you what's normal, when should you worry, what should you actually know, and try to very quickly go through some of the things that I am answering every day and the answers I want you to have. Before we get started, Huge thanks for being here. I appreciate your support as the channel is growing. Please subscribe, like, share, ask a comment below so that we can create this into a video for you and check out the fertility formula at nataliecrawfordmd.com slash book. If you pre-order the fertility formula, you can join our pre-order book club, which is gonna be modules, so much learning, monthly Q and A sessions, and you'll also get the hormone reset guide and the IVF course. So if that's you and you need IVF, you definitely want to pre-order the book so you have access for the future. These bonuses are only available if you pre-order. All right, question number one, can I get pregnant anytime during my cycle? And the answer is no. When is the best time to get pregnant? Well, you may not know that the egg only lives for 24 hours and sperm can live inside the female reproductive tract for up to five days. This means there's actually a six day window, the five days before and the day of ovulation, when you could potentially get pregnant. And if we really think about it, that egg is just so short lived. We really want to make sure sperm is getting there when the egg is in root or beforehand. And this is why I'm always a huge fan of recommending that you track your cycles. So often I see a mistake that people are tracking their cycles and they're just marking day number one down and they're not really tracking ovulation. And that's important because we all ovulate a little bit differently. And you can learn some of your body's ovulation signs, which can be increased in cervical mucus. You can have a positive LH surge on an OPK. You can have an increase in your temperature shift after ovulation. But these tests can help you identify when exactly you're ovulating. And I have some videos on what we call fertility awareness methods if you want to learn more about them. Besides that, though, if you're having frequent sex, I think it's important to say maybe it doesn't matter as much when you're ovulating when you're first starting to try Side note, your period's a vital sign. It can tell you about the quality of your ovulation. So yes, I'm always a fan of tracking it. But if you have sex every day, don't have less sex. If you have sex every other day, don't have less sex. If you have intercourse every two to three days, two to three times a week, you are going to be putting sperm there. It will last throughout your fertile window. So there is this idea that you don't have to go overboard targeting that day of ovulation for intercourse, but studies do show that using fertility awareness methods and timing intercourse help you get pregnant faster. Number two is going to be, do I need to do anything special with intercourse? And the short answer is no. As long as ejaculation is happening, we are fine. Orgasm for females doesn't hurt or help things. So there's nothing special to do there. Lubrication, you want to make sure you're using a fertility friendly lubricant. It will say it on the form and I've got a whole list of them that you can learn about. And we want to make sure that if you are having sex, you can have any position. There's not one single position that's going to be better or more advantageous or help you get pregnant faster. You don't need to lie with your legs up afterwards. You can get up and go pee right away. So there's no particular coital practices that you need to follow if you are trying to get pregnant. So you just need to make sure that you are in fact having intercourse. Number three, how do I know that I am actually ovulating? Yes, your period is a vital sign. So the number one best way is that if you're having a regular predictable period, meaning you can look at a calendar, take your finger, tell me when your next period is going to come and be off only by one or two days, then I know you are ovulating. That doesn't speak to the quality of that ovulation, but it does tell me, in fact, you're ovulating. If you have irregular cycles, absent periods, if you have no idea when you're ovulating, you might not be ovulating regularly. And if you want to track your cycles, this is where I recommend we use some of those methods I talked about. The short answer here is that as an egg grows, it makes estrogen. At peak estrogen levels, you are going to have a change to the cervical mucus. When it's not time to get pregnant, it's a barrier for sperm. And as pregnancy is approaching, that cervical mucus is going to get sticky, stretchy, and egg white to allow sperm to go through. So if you wipe, notice the 
sticky egg white stuff, that's type four cervical mucus. And you should target intercourse that day. And that is a sign that you're ovulating and mark that down. Another one is going to be urinary based hormone measurements. You can buy these as OPKs, ovulation predictor kits, which check just LH, or there's a lot of fancier systems that check more hormones that you probably don't need, but maybe you're curious. But what we know is that when your estrogen is that high, over 200 picograms for 50 hours, the high level of a mature egg, this is going to tell the brain that you have a mature egg, and then the brain's going to send out a surge of LH or luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone is going to allow the follicle to rupture, the egg to be released, and then you'll be in a position to make progesterone. So if you're checking LH, you need to start before you think you're going to ovulate, take them one time per day. You're looking for your positive surge. That is going to be the first time it turns positive. And then you want to have intercourse that day and the next day because this is the day before. And then lastly, your temperature rising. After you ovulate, when that corpus luteum is made, it will now make progesterone. And progesterone is fascinating and does a lot of things. And one of those things is raise your core body temperature. This is where tracking your temperature can be very enlightening. It can be frustrating. But I love modern tracking methods. I'm a big fan of natural cycles and I'm one of their medical advisors. And they can combine with wearables like your Apple Watch or your Aura Ring. It is an easier way to track your temperature without overanalyzing the data. All right. Question number four is, is my age really that important? Yes, it, it is, but it's not everything. What I want you to think about is that your eggs are inside your body your entire life. Well, they do absorb the wear and tear and your chromosomes are held in a perfect position. And over time, inflammation, life, time starts to move those chromosomes around. I use the bad analogy of a line of kindergartners. And the longer I ask them to stand in line, the higher the likelihood somebody's going to get out of line. So there are definite age-related changes that happen as you get older with your chromosomes. This is actually confusing because a study came out showing no age-related change in mitochondrial DNA, which really importantly, you have the nuclear DNA, the chromosomes you pass on that we think about. And then you also inside the egg have a mitochondria. And mitochondrial DNA doesn't absorb change the same way. That's really good because the second half of egg quality and age is the egg competency, the metabolic health, the mitochondrial health. And it's great that our mitochondrial DNA doesn't age the same way because there's enough in our world that we're exposed to that can damage our mitochondria or harm our egg quality. And this is chronic inflammation, insulin resistance, things like autoimmune disease and chronic inflammatory disorders, the food we eat, not getting enough sleep, toxins, that can impact how our eggs function. So even though, yes, there is a demonstrated decrease in the ability to get pregnant as you get older, we start to see this most sharply after age 37, and it's not an all or nothing. You also can see an impact on egg quality from the world around you and the choices you make every day. And that's why I always want you to focus on anti-inflammatory choices to decrease that inflammation and decrease insulin resistance, especially if you're older, have low reserve, have infertility, or just want to have your best health possible and get pregnant the fastest. And then question number five, I get asked all the time is, should I test my fertility if I'm not ready to get pregnant? And this is one that I've got to tell you, I'm a big believer, yes. And the medical society is going to tell you no. And that's where it's okay to make a choice that's right for you. The testing that we can do is going to depend on your exact circumstance. But in theory, this can include a semen analysis for your male partner, test of ovarian reserve for you, typically a blood test called AMH, and you can also check an HSG or a tubal evaluation of the uterus and the tubes. If you're partnered with a partner and y'all want to have kids one day but not yet, I definitely recommend a semen analysis. If you are a woman who wants to have a family one day but not yet, I absolutely recommend an AMH blood test. When? The moment you're asking the question. It's not a perfect test. It doesn't prove fertility, meaning a high AMH tells me you have a lot of eggs remaining. That doesn't mean you'll have an easy time getting pregnant. But a low AMH can tell me that there could be something else going on that might in fact impact your fertility. It doesn't mean you'll have infertility. Having just a lower egg count as long as you're still ovulating doesn't mean you can't get pregnant. But there are things that can cause a low AMH that can also cause infertility like endometriosis, smoking cigarettes. And if you don't get the opportunity to intervene, then this choice might be made for you instead of letting you be the one to make it. 
Low AMH might make you freeze your eggs, try sooner, make a different game plan, or at least be the one to make the decision yourself instead of having time make it for you. And then when it comes to anatomical evaluation for anybody who has risk factors, so history of gonorrhea, chlamydia, endometriosis, severe pelvic disease, maybe inflammatory bowel disease, a ruptured appendix in the past, this might be somebody who I think it's important to check your anatomy before you get pregnant because the index of suspicion of having something wrong is higher. Now, this isn't the regular person with regular periods. Of course, if your periods are extremely painful, if you're bleeding through your clothes, if your cycles are irregular, you're not normal and you absolutely need an evaluation to see what's going on before you just start trying. So at any moment, if you experience some of those symptoms, please go see a doctor. All right, friends, well, I get tons of fertility questions, so why don't you ask some below in the comments so that I can answer them there or in a second video. As always, I appreciate your support. You can get more information on the As A Woman podcast. You can pre-order my book, The Fertility Formula, or you can check out more information on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. Thanks, friends.